So welcome back to Stew Structures. Now that we have a water tower in Billington, West Virginia, we need to have a way to fill it from the river. So we're going to build a pumping station. So I am Mark Stewart and we're going to start a build on a pump station. You know, I don't have any pictures of the one in Billington, but I do have some standard plans and I would imagine that this is what was in Billington, even though I don't know. There was a river right there and uh, they would have had to have had a way to pump water from the river to this uh, water tower. So, you know, we're going to jump into this and build this pumping station and have another building ready for the model layout. Now you can see here the set of plans that came out of the standard plans book. Uh, you know, it gives you all the detail and stuff you really need to build the whole thing. Uh, here's just, you know, the side shot. This has a nice coal chute door on it and some detail on that. And, uh, you know, just if you need to know anything, it's on this drawing. The size of the building, the size of the footers what was inside the building if you want to do an interior to the building which I'm not but you know it's 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 everything you need now I have this one uh, sheet of siding clapboard siding left so I'm going to use this to cut the sides out of and I just come back and cut the overall size of the sides to begin with and where the corners meet, you know, if, if you butt these up, you're going to have an end of a sheet showing. So I just come back and just cut rough 45s on the ends of all four walls. So when they meet up and I do trim, they're going to look better. And I just went through my junk box and found these windows, which will serve the purpose for the two windows that I need in a door. And I do go ahead and trim off you know part of the windows to make them fit in the wood and do what I want to and not be back mount and I just lay the wood down and with the windows you know I go ahead and lay those out on the wood as well as the coal chute and where the door will go and then I come back and cut those out and do a basic paint layer for the wood on the walls and basically that's the walls you know ready for everything else to be added to them now the doors and the coal chutes, the coal chutes I'm going to go ahead and cut to size because they're flush with the outside of the building, but the doors can be mounted from behind. And I just, you know, use an upside down knife and scribe boards in these. The main door is cut into two parts because the door's boards slant down from the center out. For trim on this, for the doors and windows I'm going to use one by four, and in the corners and the upside of the building I'm going to use one by sixes. So I just go ahead and take those out and rattle can them black and come in and start putting trim around the windows, around the openings for the doors and the coal chute. And then, uh, you know, the coal chute has four hinges on it. And I, you know, I just drew these out on paper, nothing, you know, fancy or anything. They're about the same size. And I took an X-Acto knife, cut them out, and then glued those to the door, and we have hinges in place. Started adding the door, uh, you know, jam parts and everything onto that as well, so the door looks right. And then the coal chute gets this bar across it with, uh, you know, I don't know what you call them, but clamps on either end so they can be removed so the doors can be opened. And the door just has a clasp and a pin on it according to the drawing. So I just put something on the door, just a cut piece of paper and a piece of uh, round stock and then paint everything black. And, you know, that's all that and done. And the trim on all the one before is done. So I come back and add one by six trims to the corners of the building and all the way around the top edge of the building. And then I put the center piece in there, which will brace the roof. Now this has four sides on the roof that come up and meet in the center. So I found out where those meeting points are and I put this support in there to support the ridge pole. And then I just come back, I do my four corner angle pieces, and then come back and do all the uh, straight pieces to support the walls. I go find my for sale sign, the cheap plastic that, you know, I always use for stuff like this. There's plenty of support there, so I'm not adding anything extra. 
and I just turn the building upside down on the plastic and, and you know draw out the lines make sure there's a one foot overlap at the uh, sticking out at the bottom of the wall and just cut the pieces and glue them on you know two ends I kind of have to put them in place and play with them and put them in place and play with them to make sure everything meets right at the bottom once those are on there you know these all have rafters that stick out on that one foot of the bottom so I just found some plastic and cut some links and came back and cut all my one foot rafters now I you know I cut these so that I could put a facial board on them and then realized in the drawing that this building doesn't have facial boards so these set back just a a little bit from the edge of the roof but that's okay and I just marked them two foot on centers and came back and glued them into place and then put black paint on all that and that's the whole underside of the roof done now the shingles you know I came through and just uh, drew all my control lines on there for laying out my shingles and I'm just using cut vinyl shingles the way I did on a previous building. Uh, you know, I just cut strips out of it, use a knife and cut indiscriminately shingles, cut them to pieces and just start peel off the back and just start gluing them on and work my way up the buildings. The ends I just let run rampant and then once I have a whole side done I come back and cut off all four of these ends. And then I come back and do the two end walls, you know, the same way. And uh, you know now we're ready to do the overlap that connects you know all both sides of the roof. And for this, I'm just going to use this small angle. Yeah, you know, it works out well, and uh, will hold everything down and in place. So I come back and cut the ridge piece first, and then cut the angle pieces on the four corners, and just glue that down to the roof line. And now all the you know the cast iron is on the top of the roof. Now this also had a stove pipe in the end that had the boiler which ran the pumps for the pump station. So you know we have to come back and add this stove pipe over top where the, the boiler would be, and that's everything on the roof. So now we can come back and just finish putting black flat back paint on the whole roof system and uh, you know that will be everything on the roof completed. Lately, uh, you know, around the turntable deal here, I did get a little bit of marring on the walls uh, to clean it up a little bit, but uh, basically it's a, it's a pretty good looking little structure for what we gotta have. So now we have a way to fill the water tower that we made before this structure. I like this little pump house. It's a neat little structure. There was a lot of different small structures similar to this that were used on the railroad. Little mini telegraph offices, uh, watchman shanties, a lot of different and they're all real similar in construction to this one. So if you're wanting to make some other small structure just look at this and condense it and you, you can make whatever you want for your model railroad following these uh, guidelines to help you put it together. In any case, it's nice to have another little small structure done for the Beelington area. We've got several more to build for Beelington, and you know we got to get back to Grafton at some point in time. And there's other smaller stuff along the way as well that we need to build for other areas of the model layout that I'm eventually going to put together. So you know, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you come back and share my next build with me. Uh, I've got plenty of stuff coming up in the future. Uh, yeah, I'm starting to get, get really, really busy with work, so I'm not sure. I, I, right for a while, I'm going to be able to get one out every week, and I've got a lot of things working, so uh, it's not going to slow down immediately. But we'll see how this goes as everything opens back up in the country and everybody's able to get back into the full throw of life again. So in any case, like and share these videos and subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell icon below and you'll be notified when I have new content coming out. And, uh, you know, thank you for uh, coming and sharing this time with me. I really do appreciate my subscribers. I appreciate all the comments you leave below as well. 
Uh, you know, I'm learning as I do some of this. A lot of this stuff I've never done before. And I've been building for a long time, but I try new stuff all the time and experiment with stuff that you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. You know, everybody has their own way of doing things. And my whole perspective is just to throw all this out there and hopefully you'll gain something by it that'll make it easier for you to scratch build something for your model railroad. And the whole purpose of all of it, well, Happy Model Railroading.